Welcome along guys. Well in this episode I'm preparing to get dirty because in this one what we're doing is cleaning, scrubbing, polishing, bashing, <laughs> scraping. I'm basically going through all of my bits and pieces sorting out what needs to happen. I want the casings from the engine sent off to factory projects to be coated. I've got stuff to be sent off to be powder coated. I've got bits coming out of my large ears. So let's jump straight into it. I've also got my ultrasonic cleaner. So we're going to go through some parts cleaning. Bend over. We're about to get mucky. <laughs> Roll the intro. Well, there's a small selection <laughs> of the parts I've got to sort through. So I have to decide the best course of action, you know, what, what, how I'm going to clean each of these, what I've got to sort out to be sent off for cera coating, powder coating, whatever other sort of coatings are possible these days. I think what I'll start with is just going through some of these bolts putting them through the cleaner, it's just don't do it systematically, a bag at a time through the cleaner. So here is my little uh, ultrasonic cleaning machine. This cost me, I think it was £75, and it's what they call a uh, two litre uh, tank. It doesn't quite fit two litres in it, but more or less. You can get, uh, if you split down some carbs, you can get it in there, whatever. I've got different sorts of fluid. This is just hot water. I've also been on eBay and bought, uh, this is a, a carburetor cleaning solution. So you basically mix 10 parts water to one part of the cleaning solution. I've marked it. This is all very technical. So that much water, I know if I pour up to the second gold line, I've got my uh, 10 to 1. As I say, it's all very technical. A little shaky cakey. And then we pour it in. I'll turn it on to 60 degrees. It's got a little, it's got a little uh, heater in it, so it'll warm the water to 60 degrees. I used hot water, but it's only 20 at the moment. We go to 60. That'll take a while. It's also got a timer, about 15 minutes apparently, to clean something like a set of throttle bodies. Speaking of, these are the throttle bodies off the bike. I'm going to put these in here. You know, I've got things like this sensor here. I don't know what that is. I've got the throttle position sensor on the end. I know what that one is, but you don't want to submerge those in 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 liquid, you know, ultrasonically. I don't think I do anyway. So I'm going to take off the throttle position sensor. I've just marked it because these, uh, you know, these are. I think there's some adjustment on these, so you can get them spot on. I've marked it with a bit of gold pen, and hopefully I can put that back in exactly the same place. This bike's never going to run properly when I'm finished, is it? <laughs> it's never going to work again. Should be able to split these into two bits now. Now that rod pulls out. So now I can take off this sensor. We're not mucking around. We're properly stripping this bike. Drill throttle bodies with that. Into the deep fat fryer. It's not quite fully in. We'll have to turn them over in a minute. And then let's set the on the dial. Ah, grubs up. So there we go. Looks pretty darn decent. Pretty darn decent. My bit of pen has come off the throttle position sensor. Oh god. Oh god. Let's put them back together. There we go. Reassembled. I've also run these inlet trumpets through and the uh the Jubilee clips come out like new. Absolutely brilliant. 
I can't wait to see how it what it's like on bolts and stuff because that has come up beautifully here and those were horrible so uh, I say adequate results with the carb I, you, you could try different cleaning solutions and stuff perhaps not as good as having a you know an industrial sort of uh, ultrasonic cleaner but they're certainly cleaner they're certainly clean enough to go back on the bike and that's what's important a top tip when removing engine casings draw out an outline of your casing and then as you remove the bolts stick them through the cardboard and then you've got a record of what bolts went where top tip In. Springs out. There's actually not a lot left on these clutch plates by the look of it, almost sort of down to the wear mark. Ah, that's what we want. Impact driver. <laughs> Impact driver again. Inside the engine, there's no sludge. I was worried about sludge, you know, what with, I mentioned it on the first video, with a lot of sludge in the sight glass. This is the sight glass casing side. And yeah, there's no, uh, there's no sludge inside. Fantastic. Well, we're getting a little bit serious now. The casings are off, it's all getting a little bit technical. I've also got to take some of the casings apart and remove all of the seals, everything from them for, for the Cerakote. You can't have anything left on them, they've got to be absolutely bare. While I was in it, obviously, I thought the clutch plates looked a little bit low. According to the manual, they should be a minimum of 2.6 millimetres. Well, mine are about 2.8 something, so there's a little, you know, they're within serviceable life. I don't know how much meat you get on them new. They don't look like they've got too much. I'll give you a close-up, but I may replace them and get a new clutch kit while I'm in here. Makes sense, doesn't it? Now I've got to strip the casings down further, remove things like these oil, these O-rings. I've even got to remove like the sight glass from the casing. There's a temperature sender here as well for like an oil temperature. So all that's got to come out. So this is uh, getting more complex than I thought it was going to be. That's the trouble with having a, a dry clutch. Obviously there's got to be an oil seal between the clutch and the internal parts of the engine. Whereas normally on a wet clutch, you just take the casing off and everything's just under the casing. But it's like split between a dry and a wet area. So, you know, you've got to replace bearings to keep that oil seal. So let's start stripping the casing down and see if I could even get things out of it. I'm gonna go burnt bronze on the casings and also burnt bronze on all the little uh, the little caps and stuff as well. I think that'll look nice, keep it just the two colors really. Same the other side, you know, these uh, the cam access ports on both cylinders and then of course the casing is off this side as well. So I need to cover this engine up now stop any dirt and grit getting into it until we're ready to put it all back together. So there's all the parts which are going off to be Cerakoted, as I say, the caps, etc. I've ordered a lot of spare parts because, because I've got the swinging arm out to be powder coated. I've got to replace all the bearings in the swinging arm. So I'm much about, well, I'm much about, I just put an order into Ducati for 80 quid for bearings and seals. This is before I do this one. So it's probably going to be another 80, 100 pounds to replace all the seals and bearings I have to do on this as well. So let's take off these seals, off all these casings, and I can get these sent off to factory projects 
to all get coated. Beautiful! It's not keen. Bin. I'm probably going to have to replace this side glass. It's not actually that expensive. It's, it's around, I think it's around about £15 to replace all of the side glass. So I think I'll just push it out and then uh, expect to have to replace it. It doesn't even tell you in the manual how to get that out. It doesn't even tell you in the service manual how that's going to come out of there. Well, there we go, guys. Everything stripped, removed from the casings. These are now fully ready to go off to factory projects for painting. Beautiful. These are going to come back beautiful. I'm going to go black with this again, but I still don't like these cast marks. So I'm determined <laughs> to try and remove those on my grinding wheel, my polishing wheel. So let's give it a whirl. I've changed the wheel on here. I've changed to uh, like a fibre wheel, which I'm hoping will be a bit more, that's, that will be a bit more uh, abrasive than just like, a, you know, the polishing soft cloth wheel. That will take ages. So this is actually quite abrasive. I think this will make short work of this and it will take out these cast marks quite easily. These are definitely cast, they're not billet. And people who said, you know, that's, that will affect the st structural integrity of the component, no. These little bits of uh, casting lines will not affect how strong this bit of aluminium is. So let's get it under my Sealy machine. Let's go. So straight away, 30 seconds worth of work, you can see it's made short work of those, of those uh, cast marks or this back piece. So I think that's going to work just fine. Bit of an experiment now, I've got two sets of bolts. The bolts from the bottom yoke and also all the bo bolts from the subframe. I've got a bit of petrol in this jar and I'm going to see what's the difference between petrol or just in the fluid because you can actually put stuff inside jars and stuff so if you don't want to fill this the actual uh, machine with petrol you can put petrol in a jar and it work just as well put those in and the petrol So there we go, first pass compared to that. That's literally five minutes, if, if that, if five minutes. It's made out of a mess in my booth though. <laughs> Saggy boobs. They have come out incredibly well. Where they're corroded, you can't, if they're corroded, they're corroded. It's only cleaning dirt off, it won't, it won't clean corrosion off. Yeah, they've come out beautifully. Let's have a look at the uh, petrol ones. Yeah, they've also come out lovely. I should have done half of the same sort because it's a different sort of bolt, different levels of corrosion, different levels of dirt. Oof, that's mucky. <laughs> That's a mucky business, but I think that is pretty decent. Cast marks, gone. These will of course be aqua blasted, I suspect, before being uh, cerakoted. I've not gone too mad on the inside of them, but just concentrated mainly on the areas you can see. <laughs> Ching. The next time you see these, these will be a beautiful coat, probably satin black, I think. So all of my parts are packaged up now, ready to go off to factory projects. A big old box of bits to be Cerakoted. But that's the end of the video. Thanks very much for watching. Really appreciate your feedback on these videos. I really appreciate all your comments. 
please, I always try to respond to all the comments. I always give it a, li a like if I can't actually have time to respond to it, but really appreciate all the feedback with these videos. Next time, we should have some more new bits to show off. A delightful new seat cover. Uh, some powder coated parts being returned. Massive thanks, Adam. And many, many other exciting developments. So I will see you on the next video. Take care, stay safe, and I will see you soon. Cheers, guys. Let's get to the post office. Woohoo!